Greetings once again. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to join you again for this discussion series that we're looking at in terms of advancing the pharmacy practice in our domains. As I mentioned in the last discussion that we had last week, the key bit was in the role of professional sessions in advancing professional practice. And on this particular day, as I intimated initially, then we are going to look at financing the pharmaceutical value chain. And the reason as to why I believe this is a critical topic and a critical area of discussion for us as pharmacy practitioners is the fact that there's that need for the financial component for us to be able to achieve our desires and to be able to deliver the services that we are supposed to deliver. There is need for financial resources and economic resources. And these resources have to be there first from, let's say, for example, from the design and the discovery of the medicines. Somebody has to invest in that value chain. Then once it has been designed, we've discovered the product, we've researched as much as possible to get the right product that is going to manage a particular condition. We need to ensure there's financing to manufacture it, the production component. Then once the product has been produced, then somebody needs to finance the distribution from the manufacturing site to the sites, to the countries, to the patients, we will be taking them. And also to ensure that the patient has the financing capability to be able to pay for that service, for that medical product and the medical service. So financing is a critical component in the pharmaceutical value chain. And I'm looking at it with the fact that we have critical domains that we'll be looking at where do we have the role of the, the key areas in terms of financing healthcare. And in that kind of space, when we look at it from manufacturing, research and development, distributorship and wholesaling, that is movement of the product from the manufacturing site to the different countries and territories where it will be used by the patients. Then we have that community pharmacy practice where we have the pharmacies delivering services and also the product that are being sold at that point of care. Then we have pharmaceutical system strengthening. On that, we could look about implementation and operational research, looking at how, what are the different factors that come into play to ensure that patients can receive and make the best use of the pharmaceutical services and products that are being availed. And what other dimensions would affect how they access these services? One of the key bits we could look at in terms of pharmaceutical system strengthening is Everybody talks about pharmacies being the most accessible healthcare providers, but how then are we positioning them to be key contributors in the pharmaceutical value chain? And how key are we positioning them to be the primary contact of care to deliver quality healthcare services and address the shortfall that we're having in our ecosystem, in our healthcare systems? I would mention one challenge. Actually, yesterday I was watching this, this documentary covered by the KTN on Dr. Evil. We look at it from the sense that there's only one health facility that was NHIF accredited in that particular region near rural Sipili Hospital. And when you look at it, the other community pharmacies within the neighborhood that would be able to offer services to patients, especially where you look at some being admitted when they didn't really need to be admitted. What if we could position community pharmacies, pharmacies in that region to be primary care facilities with the NHIF accreditation? Then it would mean patients would be able to receive the services and the services would be financed through the National Hospital Insurance Fund, NHF. And therefore, with that, we are ensuring the affordability of care and access is optimized through confirmed outlets, confirmed systems and kind of frameworks. And then we are addressing some of these shortfalls that are within the system. So how can we look at pharmaceutical centering from that perspective? At a policy level, we need policy that are responsive. But you won't tell me that you'll be taking a pharmacist from her own practice to come contribute to shaping policies. Let's say, for example, we have a workshop at one particular moment. They need someone to be continuing the running of their premise. They need someone to be managing patients at that period. So how do we look at financing these kind of interventions where if one of them is going to contribute in policies, there's somebody who is sustaining the engagement and delivery of services at the primary care facility. And then we look at how does this build into the future of the entire practice domain that we're looking at. And therefore that makes financing to be a critical component from buying products, paying for the products, paying for the services, paying the human resource, that is from training of that human resource, upskilling of them and engaging them to deliver services and motivating them to continue wanting to do more, wanting to deliver those quality services. So there's a lot that we need to do in terms of financing. So when I look at it, and I'm going to look at it from the dimension of what are the financing solutions that are there. And these financing solutions are based on the discussion that I had in terms of the place of the professional associations. And that is why even from the title aspect, I'm looking at the financing, yes, but it's the place of professional association in helping us get the financing that is critical for us. One bit of it, there's venture capitalists that are willing to pump in money 
into certain frameworks and certain financing from revenues. And these are people who are looking at gaining, making money, it's an investment for them. And the only anchor that would be available to help them deliver that would be through professional associations and even these kind of business management organizations, BMOs and related. So we need somebody who would serve as an anchor and would be able to give that credibility in terms of these are the solutions that we're giving. And therefore venture capitalists would be keen to partner with them because one, before somebody pumps in the money, they need to see the business case. How are you sure that you that we are going to get our money back? That is one. Two, what kind of a market domain, market segment are you meeting? And if we are able to look at that dimension, then I think through professional associations and the respective networks, we are able to deliver on that mandate and we are able to make the best code out of what we're doing. That is a key bit. In terms of microfinance, I look at it from these microfinance organizations, ventures, giving the short-term loans, the short-term financing securities and related. We could talk even of circles at that particular moment in time. So what avenues are there? I can look at it from a dimension of a discussion we had one of my good friends. We were looking at it, if let's say pharmaceutical industry players and stakeholders came up with the finance and investment solution for themselves. And this would be an investment fund that is going to help them in terms of optimizing the pharmaceutical value chain. Financing from manufacturing, if we can also all manufacture by ourselves, can we establish distributorships? Can we establish community pharmacies? So that at the end of the day, it's not only financing the access to the product, by financing the access to the product and the services across the value chain and creating employment opportunities for the very professionals who need these employment opportunities. So we mobilize resources from the members as an investment solution for them, but they are investing not only for the value of the money they're going to reap out of that investment in terms of returns, but they are making those returns, but at the same time, shaping the domain of practice that they are within. I'm a pharmacist, I'm investing my money into that platform, investment fund, because I know I want to shape the future of pharmacy practice. And I want to shape that particular domain of pharmacy practice while at the same time making money to ensure the next generation of professionals or the next generation of pharmacists who are coming into that place will be able to make the best of the value, value that they're getting. When you look about equity financing shares, how many shares do we have in the available? That would be linked to the previous, con the previous point that I'm looking at in terms of me as, a as David, I would be investing my money and getting a particular share of the whole investment, but as an equity financing solution, I'll be able to get my money. Then bank loans, we all acknowledge that the role of financial institutions is critical and banks are playing a critical role in that space. And one of the key bits that we've actually remember last year, but 2020, we had a discussion with one of the financial investors, dealers, advisors that is, and it was made clear that from the pharmaceutical industry, the financial institutions are willing to bring in the money to finance solutions. But one, there's no visibility of the products moving from the manufacturer to the distributor to the patient. And that visibility, if it is available, then the financing flow has also to be there. And therefore, we need two visibility components. The visibility of the financing in terms of the products that are coming through the value chain that would show the credibility, the business case. We are moving these quantities of products over this period of time, serving this number of patients. And then on that account, then on the other end, we can say we need this amount of money to be able to finance it. This is the particular individual working within the value chain that needs that money. And therefore, banks would be able to help you finance your stock acquisition costs when, for example, you are a distributor in the distributorship. But then once they finance that, you're able now to have stock to move through the chains. I think those are some of the critical bits that are coming in. And some of the ventures that would be leading in that end, if at all, we can have a consolidation and aggregation in the value chain, then we would be doing a great job and we'd be able to look at those bank loans, bank financing facilities that would be able to serve our need. And on that, I believe even as pharmacists, when we're doing, doing our pharmacy practice and all, we need to look at it in terms of how, how many of us can look into the financing component, can specialize in finance. If I have the pharmacy background and I would be keen to get into the financial sector, then I would be able to shape so investment solutions and financial facilities that are able to champion and actually streamline the financing processes within the community pharma or within the pharmacy space. And as I'm doing that, I'm ensuring we are getting money from a financial perspective, but at the same time driving the future of pharmacy practice. Insurance. Private insurance companies do accredit the different facilities. 
And I think that is another bit that we as professional associations, we need to leverage and look at how do we have our community pharmacies and our outlets of practice as pharmacists registered, by, uh, registered and onboarded as private, by private insurers as primary care facilities. Once that is done, patients can procure medicines and the services from us, which will be paid for by the private insurance companies. And that would be a win because now affordability and the financing component is catered for. From a, from a public perspective, as I mentioned when the case will be looking at Sipili Nyaruru, if community pharmacies within the locality were able to deliver these services, then it would be a win because the financing NHF that we're talking about that is still being used even in the hospital, unfortunately in the hospital, there is an aspect of fraud and questionable conduct within the facility. From a community pharmacy practice, that would be changed. And if that is changed, then the patients are getting the quality care the financing in facility that say, for example, NHF is paying for services that are really rendered and the patients are getting value for their money. And it would also serve as a mechanism for the insurance facilities and the public health insurance institution that is NHF to convince the public that you don't have to pay thinking you're not going to get value out of it. Because for now I acknowledge that some of the individuals that would be willing to pay for the insurance are not doing it for. Why? Because there's no value. When I'm unwell, I'll go to a community pharmacy and buy my medicine. The clinics that are around me, the one that is accepting NHF card, doesn't actually offer the quality service that I'm expecting. And therefore, I don't have an incentive to do it. So if you build a business case for them by showing them that we have these outlets that are community pharmacies that are willing to offer quality services for you and are positioned within the locality where you are. So there's access and there's affordability in terms of who is financing that care. Then I have an imperative to get insured. And that would be a critical bit that we need to look into. Cooperatives, as I mentioned in the other page, we are looking at circles, having an investment fund as an organization, as professional within our networks, that would be a win. And ultimately, the last bit for me is the aspect on grant funding. There are different organizations and different entities that are keen on strengthening pharmaceutical value chain and strengthening systems in terms of healthcare systems. And these are either project-based, facility-based, or particular research initiatives. So if we're looking at initiative projects or health systems generally, there is a particular service that we could deliver. I remember last week, but last week, yes, on 14th of February, I was presenting in the FIP webinar, and I was talking about the role of pharmacies advancing self-care and mental, delivery of mental health care services. If we could position ourselves and look at what role do we play as pharmacists in the mental health space, and we design a solution, then we could pre do a proposal that proposal could get us money in terms of grant funding opportunities. And with such a solution, we are able to deliver quality services to the public. But at the same time, there is an incentive for such kind of a solution. And it's not only in mental health, even when we're talking about antimicrobial stewardship. Antimicrobial systems is a problem. And as much as it is a problem, mm -hmm. we have a role to play. And the role to play is to look at rational prescribing and dispensing practices and community awareness on the impact of irrational use of antibiotics. So we can look at it from the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Stewardship as documented by the WHO. And on that case, we are looking at infection prevention and control, rational prescribing and dispensing both in animals and humans, then the financing of research to develop new antimicrobials that are critical. Then ultimately, what are the financing mechanisms to ensure that we secure our healthcare system to be able to meet the needs? So if we look at such, there's so much that can be done. But at the same time, we have the different in financial incentives that will determine how we practice as individuals. So if somebody would not be keen on health education because at the end of the day, that level of education is not being compensated for. What if we had project related activities and these projects are financed that would be giving an incentive for the practitioner to deliver such solutions. So in terms of financing, there's so much that we can do, but we have to look at it from within the networks and decide we are going to design a solution. And this solution is not only for us to make money, but making money while delivering impact and serving the communities that we are supposed to be serving. And I think if we deliver on that account, we'll be on a better level and we'll be championing for a better future of our practice. Thank you so much. Let's meet in the second next webinar or the next video con discussion. And on that, I'll be talking about the role of pharmacists in championing self-care. And on that account, I believe we all acknowledge what self-care could be and what we can do. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel, get less engaged, let's share your opinions and comments, and let's make the best of the future of our practice. Thank you. See you next time.